Hey everybody, welcome back to Quality Time. This one is a little bit late because I honestly completely forgot about it yesterday, so that happened. Um, there isn't very much in the news this week. Remarkably enough, you'd think so, getting last week was my birthday. Uh, <laughs> but we do happen to know that Path of Steel, the next Dungeons & Dragons Hats campaign, is finally on. Everyone has their characters, all of the artwork is putting together, and we should be back on Sunday, so yay for that. Moving on to the schedule, though, tonight, Thursday, we have Midnight Goo. Uh, we finished off the Midnight Stories episode of uh, Minecraft Story Mode in a single session, as we expected, so Midnight Goo returns as usual. On Friday, we have the fourth and penultimate episode of The Return, our June miniseries. On Saturday, we then have Edgington, where we're mostly after fish, but other things decide to get in our way. And we also have the first installment of Path of Steel over at twitch.tv slash dragonhat from 9pm BST. Then on Sunday we have the finale of The Return. On Tuesday we have XCOM 2. Judging by the votes so far at least, it looks like a landslide win for reviving DS, so that's going to be our starting point of that episode. And then we also have Your Close Light number 52, where who knows I might actually get back to the dwarfs. Who knows? I might even actually try and, like, update the video for once. And then on Wednesday we have the last episode related to The Return, uh, which is the behind-the-scenes feature where you get to see how I created the wonderment that is this particular series. Moving on to our question and answer section, Lying Answers is of course drawn from the questions of the preceding video, so if you've got a question for the next one, put it in the comments down below. Our first question for today comes from Marvellous Holt. Will Fuzz return in any future series? There is definitely nothing preventing their return. Um, with the exception being that they don't have a lot of energy these days for almost anything. Uh, but I definitely would love to get fun in some more series, so fingers crossed we can work that out. Lucas Edwards asks, did you make the mods used by Blood and Summoner Lying? Yes, it's actually all one mod, and it adds all of the aesthetics that are related to Summoner, Blood, Cyborg, Knight, and Witch, and everybody else. Um, it's extremely basic. Pretty much the only things it does are the things that happen on camera, and sometimes not even that much. Um, but they are all the basis of like individual mods. So the Blood one works with its own with, with its own mechanics compared to the Summoner version, which has its own entirely separate spell system. I don't know what I was thinking when I decided to do that, but I don't know if any of these will ever be expanded into a full mod. I'd love to see it, but I don't necessarily have time for it right now. But we'll see. What are your thoughts on Britain potentially leaving the EU? Asks Nico25851. I specifically left this as the last question because I'm going to be talking a fair bit about this. So, for those of you who don't know, the European Union is a group of 27 states inside of the Europe area. Uh, it was started after World War II, in fact, England was a founding member of it, and it basically just works to create sort of, um, not global, but widespread international community, wherein trade is easy, everything is regulated, like, more smoothly and overarching, and the idea is that people can work together better and hopefully not get into another war. There is currently a referendum, which is to say there is a public vote, um, as to the question of whether or not we should leave it. And this vote exists because the Nationalist Party UKIP, the UK Independence Party, can you see the link here, um, got a ton of votes in the last election, and consequently uh, the ruling party, who no one likes anybody's, um, basically promised to have this referendum. Leaving the EU would be a monumentally stupid idea. About 40% of our trade is directly dependent upon the EU and the common market it presents, and then about the 60 other percent pretty much relies on it, either directly or indirectly. And we chip, like, pennies into it. Like, there's like two countries in the EU that donate less to it than we do. And it's like less than a f it's like less than half a percent of our GDP on a regular year, and it also gives us things like the benefits system, and also a number of arts projects, and also various l like legal rights, including the European Convention on Human Rights, which we wrote, <sighs> and the Leave campaign. Very similar to the vote for Alternative Vote versus First Past the Post, which was a few years back and also ended up crippling my faith in my countrymen, um, has had a very vocal and very 
blatantly lying publicity campaign, and consequently the polls are incredibly close if the Leave isn't actually stated outright to be winning. So, yeah, this video goes out after the polls close. Hopefully everyone who is voting has actually done so. Um, but here's the way that it breaks down. If we leave the European Union, we still have to trade with the European Union. In fact, we can't, like, literally there is a tunnel connecting us to them. So no matter what, we have to deal with the EU regulations for trade and such. The difference is, we won't have any say in them. And honestly, that's not a big issue because we voted for about 99% of the things that the EU has done anyway. Um, we've never really had any problems with them, except if you're a racist. Um, there's the arguments that we will be able to control our own borders, uh, but we already do. Every member of the EU can. Um, like, we can, for example, deny any criminals under EU law. And there's also the worry that there's be, there'll be certain nations joining the EU later on that are going to be, like, bad for us. But here's the thing. Any single member of the EU can veto the joining of another nation, so leaving gives us less power over that. And the Leave campaign is heavily based on, this is bad, we should leave. Uh, but it doesn't actually tell us definitively what's going to happen if we leave. What's probably going to happen is that we'll have to trade with countries for about 20-30 years at minimum before we actually have decent trade regulations going again. It'll cost us more to get around the EU, so all of our shipping and like workers are going to be very hard done by that. And we'll lose a whole bunch of uh, privileges and benefits, and not to mention rights can be overwritten. But the way that I look at it, on the very simple terms, which I think I got away from quite quickly there. If you'd like sufficient impetus to alter the status quo, do not alter the status quo. And all I've seen is complaints about problems with no actual solution. Uh, which is a bit like saying, the kitchen's on fire. The kitchen's on fire. The kitchen's on fire. Yeah, the kitchen sure is on fire. That's basically it. <laughs> okay, well, get a bucket, go pour some water on it. You know, we should leave the building. Yes, why? Because we're going to suffocate of smoke inhalation and also possibly burn alive, that kind of thing. I... But anyway, I could rant for weeks, and people have already, so I will leave that particular dead horse where it lies. Um, with that, I'll be back next week, hopefully on time, and I hope you've all enjoyed. I'll catch you all.